Some say history is a river that flows endlessly. I say that history is a series of stories written by each person's experiences. Welcome to Stories, a history of Appalachia, one story at a time. Rod, how are you doing today? I'm doing okay, Steve. How are you doing? I am fine, and I hear that you have a story about some trouble with the law and Hollywood. Yes, I do. And in order for us to be able to talk about this, this is one of the stories of Appalachia, and we are going to talk about Tommy Lee Jones. And for those people out there that have not heard of Tommy Lee Jones, I feel sorry for you. Because Tommy Lee Jones <laughs> is, to me, more than anything else, I think he is an iconic acting figure yeah. known uh, well in Hollywood, and he's also well known here in the in the mountains of southwestern Virginia as well. Yes, he is, because he and Sissy Spacek happened to come to southwest Virginia, the Wise County, Virginia area, back in the late 70s to film a little old movie called Coal Miner's Daughter. Yes, it was there that Tommy Lee Jones encountered some trouble with the local law enforcement. But we need to give you a little bit of background about Tommy Lee Jones to tell you. Now, some people might think that Tommy Lee Jones is native to the area or at least native to the Appalachian region. He's not. Tommy Lee Jones was born in 1946. He was born in a town called San Saba, Texas. Now, as of right now, he's about 69, 70 years old, but he has been known for playing Such notable roles, as I'm sure you'll probably remember, uh, played U.S. Marshal Sam Gerard in The Fugitive with Harrison Mm -hmm. Ford. Yes. He also played the uh, role of a Texas Ranger, Woodrow Call, in the Lonesome Dove miniseries on television. Agent K, of course, in Men in Black. He's been in uh, Captain America, the first Avenger, Natural Born Killers. Oh, my gosh, there's just so many more. He's played Howard Hughes, Republican, radical Republican Congressman Thaddeus Stevens, Uh, executed murderer Gary Gilmore, Douglas MacArthur, and then Doolittle Lynn, the husband of Loretta Lynn and coal miner's daughter, as well as baseball great Ty Cobb. But we're going to talk about uh, Tommy Lee Jones' portrayal of Doolittle Lynn from Coal Miner's Daughter. Now, when Michael Apted and all the group decided to go and they were going to film Loretta Lynn's autobiography. They picked out probably one of the up-and-coming actors at the time, and that was Tommy Lee Jones. Now, some people had probably seen him on television or had seen him in other roles in some movies. But uh, really, to me, I think more than anything else, Coal Miner's daughter established him as one of these universal actors more than anything else. And the thing about it was... I guess his Texas accent kind of matched the Southwest Virginia accent that we have here in the central Appalachian region. And when they brought all this crew and everyone in here, Tommy Lee Jones was one that a lot of people looked at and considered to be uh, one of the Hollywood glamour boys, I guess, more than anything else, or at least some people regarded him as being that. His mother was a police officer and a school teacher and a former beauty shop owner, and his dad was an oil field worker. So for him, parenting, family, everything like that, a lot of things of what happened in Texas kind of matched what was going on in southwest Virginia. So he was kind of familiar with things there. But when they brought the crew in to start filming Coal Miner's Daughter, a lot of the people and a lot of the extras who were southwest Virginia and eastern Kentucky residents had all gotten together, and some of them had tried out for some parts as extras and so forth. They all kind of mingled together. Now, one of the people that I know that has some firsthand knowledge of mingling with Tommy Lee Jones is none other than the pie bitter in the Coal Miner's Daughter movie, and that is Russell Varner, Steve. Oh, okay. And uh, Russell Varner still lives in Wise to this day, and he and I occasionally kid off and on about, well, did you get your latest uh, residual check in the mail? He says, oh, it's, it's drifting down. It's getting low now. He says it's been a lot of years since all that happened. But he provided me with some information here not long ago because There is a little incident that happened back in those days, back in the early days of the filming of Coal Miner's Daughter that involved Tommy Lee Jones, and it involved him, and when he got in trouble, it was the talk of the town. It was the talk of Southwest Virginia, and it was, how can I say it, Steve? It was hushed up a little bit, I guess, in areas outside of Southwest Virginia. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And all this happened back what, about March of 1979, as they were filming the movie, it all happened over in the Pound, Virginia area. 
it appears that Tommy just happened to be, um, I don't know, maybe relaxing on a Saturday night. Probably so. With a brew or two. Mm -hmm. and allegedly ended up having an accident on Highway 23. A Wise County Sheriff's deputy ended up coming upon the wreck, and in the process of trying to find out what was going on, Mr. Jones allegedly assaulted this officer. Some say it began at one of the local establishments in Pound, Virginia. Some say it happened at now what is a legend. We'll talk about that a little bit more, too, of the Golden Pine over in Pound. And the Golden Pine was a uh, local watering hole, let's say, in, in the town of Pound. And also the Golden Pine is known for a, um, I guess, a big dancing case here in the uh, probably last 15 or 20 years. But we'll talk more about that on a later edition of the podcast. But something happened, and whatever it was, as we were probably kind of alluding to with this story, Tommy Lee Jones is probably just relaxing a little bit on the side when the downtime from uh, filming and everything going on with coal miner's daughter. And Jones, who was 33 at the time, was arrested on a Thursday night by a pound town police officer after his car crash, according to Wise County Sheriff at the time, Bill Kelly. Now, from that point, he was taken on to the Wise Appalachian Regional Hospital. And when we say the Appalachian Regional Hospital, that used to be the old Miners Hospital in Wise. Now, he was taken there before being taken to the county jail, but a hospital spokesman would not give any details as to what happened. And then at the time, the newspaper who was reporting this story, the Bristol Herald Courier, and then on through to the Fredericksburg Freelance Star, they reported that Jones received stitches to his head to close a head wound. Now, the only big thing was it could not be determined if the injury occurred in a car wreck or in the car wreck, as it was reported, or if he was allegedly resisting Officer Coy Hopkins. Sheriff Kelly had told people that Jones was brought to the jail at around 1.45 a.m. on Friday morning. Then he was released seven hours later after posting bond. I'm sure that was probably no problem for him at the time. And then the trial was set for April 18th in Wise County General District Court, but nothing else ever happened after that. It was probably thrown out. We don't know to this day if, you know, the charges were eventually dropped, of what happened with the situation. But, you know, this is the thing of where the legend about everybody said, well, there was a little bit of a ruckus between Tommy Lee Jones and Tommy Lee Jones saying, you don't know who I am, and Coy Hopkins, the arresting officer, said, I don't care who you are. I don't care if the liquor's doing something to you or whatever the case may be. But one way or the other, Tommy Lee Jones was arrested and taken into the hospital, treated, and then later on taken to the jail in Wise. Of course, Jones went on to portray, as we called him, Doolittle Lynn and Coal Miner's Daughter with Sissy Spacek, and he was filming scenes here at the time for the movie, and according to Arthur Wilde, the spokesman for the film, that's what he was there for, but Wilde had not discussed the incident with him at that time, and it did not delay the film schedule whatsoever, and Jones was unavailable for comment after that whole thing happened. Now, there's other things that kind of go along with the Tommy Lee Jones story, if you really want to know some other things about it, Tommy Lee Jones and Al Gore were roommates when they were in college. Oh, really? It's hard to believe. Yes, they wow. were. They were roommates at one time. Didn't Al Gore go to this big fancy college? Yes, he did. As a matter of fact, Jones went to, uh, well, let's start it this way. Jones went to St. Mark's School of Texas where he attended on a scholarship, and then he went on to Harvard <laughs> on a <laughs> need-based scholarship. Wow. Now, he stayed in Mower B-12, according to reports, as a freshman across the hall from future Vice President Al Gore, the son of Senator Al Gore Sr. of Tennessee. Later on, he stayed in Dunster House while he was at Harvard, and later on was roommates with Gore and Bob Summerby, who later became the editor of the media criticism site The Daily Howler. He also played offensive guard on Harvard's undefeated 1968 varsity football team. He was nominated for a first-team All-Ivy League selection and played in the 1968 game, graduated cum laude with a Bachelor of Arts in English in 1969, and get this, Steve, 
His senior thesis was on the mechanics of Catholicism and the works of Flannery O'Connor. This is Tommy Lee Jones, right? This is Tommy Lee Jones. Uh, I know that's hard to I, believe, I, but I, it is Tommy Lee Jones. I would never, ever in my wildest dreams have ever said Tommy Lee Jones went to Harvard and he wrote that thesis. <laughs> never. Well, I, I never would have either. You know, and then after he graduated, he moved on to New York, became an actor, made his Broadway debut, and then he moved on to television, played in a couple of soap operas. He was also, and you might remember this as well, he was in the uh, television movie, and I was a young kid then, but I think I do remember this movie. He played the amazing Howard Hughes. Mm, I think I remember that as well. He also played in some other movies, such as Jackson County Jail, Rolling Thunder in 1977, and even co-starred with Lawrence Olivier in the Harold Robbins drama, The Betsy. Wow. You know, he got a Golden Globe nomination for his portrayal of Doolittle Lynn in Coal Miner's Daughter. In 1981, he later portrayed a drifter opposite Sally Field in Backroads, a comedy that kind of got some so-so reviews. He owns a 3,000-acre ranch in San Saba County, Texas. And you know what he does in his free time when he's there? You know, I'm almost afraid to ask, but go ahead and tell me. He plays polo. (laughs) He owns a home and and farm in a polo mecca also in Wellington, Florida. Who is this guy and what did he do with Tommy Lee Jones? Harvard? I don't know. Polo? Okay. I I don't know. It may be something that uh, Will Smith did to him with that little thing in Men in Black. It may have been wiped and erased from him. I don't know. How many people can honestly say that a big actor, a star like Tommy Lee Jones, would have got into a ruckus with a local police officer in southwest Virginia back in the late 1970s or early 1980s? And then this result, people talked about this for weeks, even months After all this took place, there were people that always talked about the police officer. They said something about Tommy Lee Jones having a smart mouth, but they said it couldn't compare to that Billy stick that went up side of Tommy Lee Jones's head. (laughs) I mean, these are just little stories of legends and, and so forth. But we can say that, yes, Tommy Lee Jones was a part of the history of Appalachia when he was here filming the story for Coal Miner's Daughter. And we have to also say this, too. If you've watched Coal Miner's Daughter and you've watched the end credits, you may be looking to see whether or not Wise County, Virginia is mentioned in the movie. Well, let me just tell you, folks, it is not. It is not mentioned in the end credits whatsoever. It was a cruel slap in the face to a lot of people in Wise County in southwest Virginia that had worked hard to get this movie over here. And you know where they filmed a lot of the scenes at, don't you, Steve? Uh, I do indeed. They filmed them at the Wise County Fairgrounds. Mm-hmm, they did. And they filmed that, of course, with the uh, Beverly D'Angelo playing the part of Patsy Cline. And they filmed that out there at the fairgrounds. Now, that was way before they even paved the fairgrounds as it exists now. But they filmed there, but they also filmed in Whitesburg. They filmed in some other parts of southeastern Kentucky. But the thing is, when the credits are rolling at the end of it, They thank the people of eastern Kentucky, and I I think they also thank some people out of uh, Whitesburg, or they thank Whitesburg, Kentucky, but there is no mention of Wise County, Virginia. And that's another story that makes up the history of Appalachia. We appreciate you listening to the podcast, and we encourage you to subscribe to the podcast. You can do so by going to iTunes or to your iPhone podcast app, or if you don't have an iPhone and you've got an Android or Windows phone, you can go to your favorite Android or Windows phone podcast app and subscribe to the podcast there as well. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter as well. We're at Twitter at Story Appalachia. So until next time, y'all take care, and we'll see you then. So long, everybody. <laughs>